Gridman has one episode to go, and honestly, I think it's going to nail its finale. A lot of people like to bring up Trigger and Darling in the Franks because a lot of the Darling in the Franks fans, they dislike the finale, but that show, only the first little intro chunk was actually written by Trigger. The final stretch of that anime was wrote by A1 Pictures, so if you disliked Franks' ending, it's not Trigger's fault. It was a completely different group that was actually writing that, so I don't think the comparisons of somehow they're going to mess up the Gridman finale is warranted because literally it's different people working on it. And based on what we've seen in these 11 episodes, there hasn't been a bad episode of this series in my honest opinion, and with how much they've revealed and all the interesting twists and turns, I think Gridman is going to go out with a bang, especially with the reveals in this week's episode, just with how much information has been just dropped on the viewer, that generally a show like Gridman should take 24 episodes to tell, but somehow they're managing to make it fun, but also make it have a lot of real depth. Seriously, this episode and just the reveal of Yuta actually being Gridman just split into two, it explains so much, especially with like a lack of personality, a lack of memories, a lack of character growth, because if he is just the hyper-aging Gridman, coming to save the day but was split into two, it makes so much more sense. Just seriously, everything about this episode, I'm actually surprised by how well this final stretch is doing because every time I see a new episode, since episode 9, I'm like, how are they going to keep the momentum going? And they just keep it up. Seeing the aftermath of Yuta being stabbed, I just like the reaction because this is a girl who is so broken, she is God. This is her world that she gets to play God and everything is cracking around her, and that's all she can do anymore. She stabs the pilot and smashes the computer. That's absolutely brilliant, and I love how, because these are her creations, they don't do anything against her. Literally, Utsumi is just completely shocked that his kind of make-believe world of, oh cool, I get to see all these kaiju come to life, he's actually seeing what can happen if things go wrong. You literally have Rika, who is devoted to Akane, who is upset, but still can't do anything against her. The pilot is taken out, then it makes sense why people like Caliber couldn't do anything, though Caliber does have a sword, so he should be able to cut off her head, but I'll give it a pass just because. And then seeing the aftermath and just everyone at the hospital saying, like, the next one in line is Auntie, and Auntie coming in just, this is what I've been waiting for. This is, like, my favorite character. It's that trope I love, the villain becoming the hero working together, but the next in line, Grid Knight, is a badass, and I love the character arc because this is a character who everyone started out probably thinking, like, I can't wait to see Gridman pummel his face in, but because of all the emotional and physical abuse that he went through, and just seeing that it wasn't really his fault for what he was doing, he was born to be that way, but he was able to break free, unlike some of the other characters who are completely devoted to Akane, and just seeing him go around kicking some kaiju ass, it was awesome to see how easy it was for him to take out so many of these enemies that actually took Gridman a good while to take out, because Gridman was split into two, so he wasn't at full strength, where we have Grid Knight, who is at full strength, but even though he is a bad badass, he is obviously going to get tired out, especially because Alexis is like, alright, if you're not going to make me kaiju, I'm just going to send everyone that you've made. Very entertaining action, but it wasn't overly complex because the entire point was to really show the fallout of what happens with Yuta and kind of exploring like, hey, cats are the bag, Yuta isn't actually Yuta, it's Gridman split into two, the real Yuta can't awaken until all this is finished. And it was just nice seeing all this action, especially in some of the shots where you're seeing just Auntie just kick some ass in the background as characters are running in the foreground, and it was nice just seeing how how fake of a world this is because you're seeing all this bizarre imagery, but it just feels so natural all at the same time. The imagery in this show is absolutely amazing, especially because Akne is a god and her world is basically coming down, it's crumbling all around her, and you'll see just her sitting there as you'll look at like a broken bridge in the background because it's just a great representation of just how much of a failure she actually is for this world. A big theory since very early on was that Akane was going to be in a coma or something like that. And I think that's definitely warranted. Also feeling like possibly someone like Yuta in the real world could also be in a coma, perhaps, so it'll be interesting to see what's going to happen, but I think characters like Rika, she probably didn't get along with her in the real world, so that's why she made her devoted in her fictional world, but I mean, just learning that probably Alexis came into her fake world, the hyper-aging Gridman came in to follow through, but something went wrong, so we got split into two, it's a really nice reveal, and I don't think many people probably saw that coming, but it does add a lot of depth and answer a lot of these questions that people probably had. But I think my favorite moment in this entire episode was actually Utsumi's reaction because he's a character in this episode who admits he can't do anything except watch his friend possibly die and I just love seeing how upset he is at what's happened because all along like even though bad things have obviously happened this is a man who loves kaiju who loves stories like this he's constantly referenced the series that he adores and what would happen in it 
while he applies it to the real world, but now he's seeing his best friend literally almost dead. And I just love how he realizes that all along when he was playing and having fun, this was real, and now everything could come crumbling down. And just seeing his reaction and the fact that he doesn't really have a redemption or do anything in this episode to really kind of make up for it in terms of his own mind. Like, I don't think he needs to do anything. I like his personality. He's fun for this story. But in his own world, if we're looking at how he's thinking, he's absolutely crushed and just nothing happens. He just gets left to say like, hey, I'm Gridman. I don't need your help. I'm using this body this is what has to happen. It was just very interesting to see that they didn't go the route of making Utsumi in this episode kind of redeem himself or anything. It was just, he gets to suffer and we move on, which was a really nice surprise. I wasn't expecting that. Granted, next week, maybe he'll do something to really help out the cause, but it was nice to see that Trigger went this direction because it was something that I really appreciated because a lot of times you would expect he would do something to revive Yuta or something to that nature, but in actuality, he just sat there depressed and I thought it made it feel very realistic. Even though we're in a fictional world, it felt very realistic like that's how someone like him naturally would respond especially because he was playing kind of like this game in his own mind all this time but it's kind of funny that all along that junk just needed a ram upgrade like seriously they should just upgrade him very early on because that's all he needed now gridman can be super powered up no issues anymore they should have done that imagine just what some of the modern computer parts would do to junk if they had them like that thing would be an absolute supercomputer literally really just from all the facial reactions i think akane continues to steal the show with all her exaggerated faces really getting you inside her head I mean the world is a representation of her head just seeing all the crumbling and just shattered buildings and the destruction it represents her world coming down but then when you have all these close-ups of her faces and just how demonic she looks I'm really excited to see what her kaiju is gonna look like next week now that Alexis just had enough of it he's saying like all right moving on we're done with you you can't create I'll make you into one I'm expecting it's going to either look completely deformed or it's gonna look completely badass it's gonna be one of the two it's not gonna be a normal looking kaiju I think it's gonna be absolutely ridiculous or completely deformed because she didn't create it and maybe it was kind of like a mock-up job something like that but I'm very excited to see seriously episode one was a fun episode 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 two onwards really established a great narrative great characters and some real depth but episode 9 10 and now 11 whew, this is some of the best content i've watched this year it has been incredible amazing writing amazing directing seriously this is gonna go down in my honest opinion as one of trigger's best shows that's how much i'm enjoying it let me know whatever you thought of this week's episode down in the comment section below do you love it do you hate your favorite moment whatever you're feeling let me know and be sure to like the video if you did enjoy and also hit that subscribe button if you want some more content from me in the future so until next time everyone please take care and have a good one